Hi, Klingman with Track Wrestling. We have a world champion, Tamara Mensa Stock. How are you, Tamara? I'm doing well. How are you, Kyle? Well, I'm good. I, I'll be doing better when I get to go by the Olympic Training Center and see your picture on the wall. Oh, oh my gosh. It has been a minute since I've seen that. Uh, it's, it's, it's pretty awesome. I think you're going to enjoy it. Probably not as much as I did, but <laughs> did you, like I know you and Jakara were super excited because Adeline Gray was already there, of course. She just gets another number on there. She's a five timer, but have you guys just taken time to stare at it? We did. We actually took the time to not only stare at it, but argue who would be over the water fountain. So like when people took a sip, like you could look at one of us. And we took the time to also dance in front of it and like point and be like, we did it, we made it. So we've taken a lot of time now to just like reflect on what we did to get there, how we got there and appreciate that we're there. But now we haven't been able to since the quarantine. And explain that, it's a big deal because as soon as you come in the Olympic training center in the wrestling room, there's a massive wall and every world and Olympic champion gets their picture. That's so awesome. It is. And every day, like, because I live here at the training center, well, in Colorado Springs, training at the training center, every single day, darn near twice a day, if not more, I have to walk past the wall of champions. And before I was on it, I just stare at it every day and be like, I'm going to be on wall it's gonna happen and then I go about my business <laughs> it was like an afterthought but I was also like planting seeds so it's a it's a it's a big deal like you get put down in history to where everybody can see it it's not a book you open up if you walk into the training center there's a whole bunch of pictures of the past and current champions so how did, it. <laughs> how did you decide what picture you were going to use um Someone, Amy Fahrenside, had came to me and she had showed me all the pictures. Because I hadn't seen really any of the pictures after I won. I was just like giddy with excitement. And she has sent me a message and said, Tamara, do you know how your logo for Rudis is a butterfly? In this picture, you look like a butterfly. And I was like, oh my gosh, I do. That is so weird. And um, it kind of just stuck with me. And when they asked me, hey, what picture do you want? I scrolled and was like, I want this one. I look like a butterfly. <laughs> and that's, that's pretty much how that came to be. And like the fact that I'm like flying and like I'm just elevated off the ground. It just, it spoke to me. And it was so cool because I didn't yell after I finished. I just said, yay. And it looked like I was yelling. And so <laughs> To me, it's comical and um, historical to me at the same time. So that all tied into choosing that picture. After you won, you were really emotional. What went into the emotion? Um, just all the hard work that I did. Because it, it took a lot of focus. And it's not like my relationships fell to the wayside. But at the same time, like I had to do a lot of sacrificing. And um, it was it was difficult. And at the same time, like I was, I knew that I could do it. But at any point in time, I could be discouraging just in myself or allow somebody to discourage me and almost like point at them and say, well, I didn't win because so and so said these words to me. And the fact that I didn't let any of that happen. I just stayed focused, stayed true to what I wanted to do and like kept loving and like continuing my hard work. All that like just melted down into me. And when my hand was getting raised, it didn't click. But when my coaches wouldn't get on the, on the floor with me, cause I was like, you guys help. And they're like, this was all you. And when they said that, I was like, it wasn't, it wasn't, oh my gosh. And like just everything, all the hard work that I did just, just started flooding my mind. And I thought of my dad and my father in heaven. And I was just like, you guys are like watching over me. I can't believe I did it. Did you guys see what I did? And just like all the past people that have believed in me that are no longer here with me, supporting me because they are um, in heaven. It, it, it just all flooded. Like all that happened in like, 30 seconds and it just it was phenomenal so that's why I look like I cry like a freaking baby because it, it, it was it was emotional like and it was my first world championship 
that I've ever won. And it's, man, I, I, I tried to describe the, the feeling as best I could, but that's pretty much what ran through my mind and why I cried so hysterically. Like it took, I think about 45 minutes for me to like literally stop. Cause they tried to interview me right after it. I was like, <laughs> you know, like okay, she's not ready. <laughs> Let's move on to the next person. <laughs> so. your, your husband was in the States going through school. I think he was studying still. Did he watch it? And how soon did you get a chance to talk to him? Oh man. I did not get a chance to talk to him as soon as I wanted to. I texted him immediately uh, when I, by the time I got to the hotel, but at the, at the stadium, I didn't have Wi-Fi. And after I won, I had to drug test. And so I was there for hours upon hours. And I, I was just like, I gotta tell my family. I don't know if they watched it. <laughs> They're like, Tamara, you have to drug test. And it took me a long time to pee. Cause Right before my match, I was like, I got to go pee because I'm nervous. And shoot, yeah, it, it took me a minute. But when I finally did get to speak to him, he was so happy. I don't even remember if we cried together, but um, he was extremely proud. And he just, he told me he knew that I could do it. And um, man, just all the things a husband is supposed to say, like he was saying it. And I was like, ah, I can't believe I did this is awesome he's like i knew you could it was awesome <laughs> where's your belt and your gold medal you want to see it yeah you got it right there oh no we have to go downstairs yeah go, go ahead <laughs> okay all right this it's the the metal workout room come on Lula. she was like sitting next to me <laughs> all right do you, do you ever wear the belt no i don't I don't, I don't, I don't wear the belt, but I could put it on right now. Yeah, please do. Right. Oh, I gotta turn the light on. All right, so, bum ba da da oh, my kettlebell. Bum, 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 bum. Bum, bum, bum. <laughs> there it is, Kyle. That is amazing. I don't know if it fits me right, but this is the belt. It does. That looks good. That's a good belt. Oh, man. That looks great. It's so pretty. I'm trying not to make sure it gets dust so I have it in the trophy case. <laughs> but this is the belt. I mean, you got to admit that that's stellar to be able to get a belt with the gold medal. Yes, it is. It's, man. Like when I got the belt, I was like, what the crud? Why does this thing look so beautiful? I feel like I'm on top of the world. And they it's and they don't they don't even give a belt for winning an Olympic gold medal. They don't? I don't think so. Oh wow. Oh wow. Wonder what that says. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so <laughs> you you got a belt for the rest of your life. They can't take it away. <laughs> No, I did everything right. They cannot take this away. This is mine for the rest of my life. And even if my kids want to be wrestlers or don't want to be wrestlers, I won't force them. But if they see all my medals in this belt, they'll be like, man, I want a shiny belt. <laughs> like, you can get one if you become a wrestler. Or a boxer. <laughs> too. Something in common. How about the, the gold medal itself? Oh, yes. The gold medal. Here it is. It's like right by the door. So. Oh, nice. It's hanging up. There it is. It's so pretty. I'll admit I like the belt more. It's way shinier. Yeah. <laughs> Cause this this gold medal from Pan Pan American Games is even shinier than that one. <laughs> so it's really cool. I appreciate all of them. That's way they cool. all speak for themselves. <laughs> what have you been doing during the quarantine? Um, for a moment, I was um, leading a lot of workouts for the junior, for the juniors. I guess I got 
call them a developmental team for the girls. So I was like leading a lot of those workouts, doing Zumba lifts with them. But I kind of started doing my own thing instead. And I've just been working out, lifting, doing a little bit of Jiu Jitsu, um, uh, going on runs. Me and my my husband just went on a run. It was like a 30 minute run, like three miles. And we finished that. And uh, I've also been learning how to play the piano and making sure I read my Bible every day and also making sure I practice Spanish every day. So I've been keeping busy. Yeah. What <laughs> the, I, I mean, as far as just the, the training part, do you feel like you're still in good competitive shape? Yeah. If you put me into a six minute match right now, I'd probably still be able to compete to the best of my ability. Like it's, it's something that it's almost like riding a bike, you know, like you, you never forget it. And I think more than anything, the adrenaline will drive me. And because I usually either do pins or techs, I'd be able to finish it quickly just in case cardio came into play. <laughs> but more than anything, I think I'll be, uh, I'm fine. Cause I don't know if you were aware, but do you remember like after the 2018 world championships and I took two months off? Yep. I, I did nothing. I mean, nothing. Like, I ate Twinkies and, like, so, like, I did nothing but play video games. <laughs> and when I came back uh, two weeks later, two weeks into my training, I had to go to the Ivy Regan and went up, I went up a weight class because I got, I got lardy. And uh, <laughs> uh, I went up at 72 and I ended up winning. <laughs> and it was, like, I'm not bragging, but at the same time, I'm like, I have a God given talent. And now I've actually been doing stuff every single day. So I am like not worried at all. I'm like, more than anything, I'm like fired up and ready to go because it just seems cool. But I get on my back and I'm like trying to choke somebody. But I want to wrestle someone. <laughs> I don't know how to do jiu So I'm excited. I'd be able to handle myself if, if I got thrown in there. Are, you, just still, have to are you still claustrophobic? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Oh my! When I was doing jujitsu, yeah, they get real close and personal. And I was on my back, and the guy, all he did was lay on me, and I was like, "Get off me! Get off! Dad, get off of me!" <laughs> he wasn't even trying to choke me; he was just laying on me. But I don't know. Like he wasn't my husband, and I was just like, "Dad, get off!" So I just started freaking out. But um. Then my husband did it to me in jiu-jitsu as well, and I had to tap immediately, too. He just, I just the closed, confined spots. I know I eventually probably would have gotten out, but that stuff is freaky. Like, <laughs> I just, it's freaky. Like, I like my space. <laughs> Gosh. So, yeah, no, I, I haven't been working on that. That's, <laughs> that's a weakness I haven't been working on. I've been doing a lot of yoga. Oh, good. That's good. good. Yeah. So that's what we did. We did, oh yeah, we ran for 30 minutes and did yoga for 30 minutes. Okay. What do you like best about Terry Steiner? What do I like best? Um, his, his hope in me and his faith in me. It never wavered, even when I didn't believe in myself. It was, it was kind of frightening and weird at the same time, but uh, like the moment he met me, the moment I started wrestling with him or underneath him, he would tell me, Tamara, you are capable of like conquering the world. All you have to do is just go out there and wrestle. Just believe in yourself. And I'd be like, Bleh! so his faith in me, uh, it's, that's one of the things I love. And his weird quirkiness too. He's silly. <laughs> <laughs> that makes him likable. And the fact that he has a twin, that's also a thing I like about him. I have well, a twin. Yeah, talking about your twins, you're the you're the one that loves to give hugs, and I'm assuming you can't give as many hugs in the quarantine, can you? I I kind of go in, I do this, and if the person's like this, I'm like, all right, my bad. <laughs> but yeah, there's not a lot of hugs going around, but uh, my mom was here the other day, and I gave her a big hug whether she liked it or not. She's a uh, She's a little older and she has diabetes. So like she's like, Tamara, you can't be touching me like that. I was like, Mommy, I haven't seen you in like a year. I need a hug. So I gave her a hug. And my twin's here too, and I give her hugs every day. 
I don't care what they feel. They're my family. Other people, I'll respect their space, but not my family. It's just not going to happen. <laughs> when you go into the wrestling room, who are the the couple of the wrestlers that give you the, the hardest times, give you the toughest workouts? Um, it would have to be Maya in Colorado Springs, right? Or just in general? Uh, in general. Maya, Mallory, and Diamond. And Adeline, of course. <laughs> like, gosh. Those are the ones that I can think of, like, right off the top of my head. And, of course, everybody gives me a, a run for my money. But Diamond, like, she's uh, she's a little bit bigger than me. So, like, she she's bigger than me, but she has speed and strength just like me. Not as much technique. So, like, it's like fighting a mirror of me. And I'm like, oh, gosh. I got to use skill against her. And Adeline, of course, she's just awesome. And then uh, Maya, she's got the heavy hands. So I freaking hate that. And she knows it, so she just capitalizes on stuff like that. And um, with Mallory, she's really quick and likes to think. So <laughs> I'm like, oh, gosh. <laughs> so each of them, like, brings something to the table. That just makes me a better wrestler. But those, those four are, like, the ones that I love wrestling, and they're tough. And I don't want to wrestle all the time because they're tough. But then I do because they're tough. Okay, I'm going to stop. <laughs> do you want to keep wrestling for another 10 years? No. How much longer? <laughs> Ten years. Um, you know, Kyle, I've been I've been thinking about that because I wanted to kind of retire after 2020, and because of this quarantine, I'm like, man, maybe I should go to 2024, but 2024 would be it, and that's reaching. That's me, like literally reaching, going. Maybe I could go to 2024. I want a baby. I have my fur babies, but I want like to hold a real baby and like teach it to talk and walk and read and I don't know, teach another human being how to be a better human being than me. I'm just waiting. So that's, I mean, you wanted to be a mom for a long time? A long time. <laughs> a long time. But I'm just twiddling my thumbs, waiting. I mean, I'm still doing awesome things, but um, yeah, my husband's like, I'm not ready. We can, you can go to 2024. Don't worry. I'll, we'll be fine. <laughs> so, he, he doesn't mind waiting. Do you enjoy competing? I do. I love it. Oh, Kyle. Where'd you go? Oh. I'm still here. My phone totally just like went to a message. <laughs> um, yes, I, I absolutely still enjoy competing. It, um, it helps me release tension that I have in my in my mind and my heart. You know, like working out is it's it's healthy for you, and it's a fun way to stay in shape, and it's a fun way to reach people that you sometimes won't be able to reach through a sport. So it's something that I definitely 100% still enjoy. It's awesome. But at the same time, I want I want a baby. <laughs> <laughs> When you get back and you get to be on the mat, how good is that going to feel? Oh, man, it's going to feel awesome. Uh, a month ago, I was on that developmental call workout uh, with a whole bunch of the kids, and my coach was on it, too. And I told the girls, when I get back on the mat, the first thing I'm going to do is do a 30-minute grind match. And my coach was like, I'll remember that. I'm like, bring it on. I don't care. I don't care if I, like, run myself into the ground. I just want to, like, keep moving and not stop. So it's ah, I'm excited. When you go to tournaments, do you get a lot of people wanting to stop and talk to you? Mm, it depends on where I'm at. In Russia, for sure. Um, at World Championships, after I won, definitely. And at Pan Am Championships, or Pan Am, yeah, Pan Am Championships for 2020, I had a few people coming up to me and going, hey! Just like speaking to them and trying to um, like just learn their language. So I have a few people, but I think it's not because I'm um, I was a champion. I think it was just because of my personality. It just kind of drew people in, and I was willing to talk to people. So that has always been the case at tournaments I went to. But I think it's more so now because they're like, oh, she showed who she is. She a champ now. But those people always came up to talk to me, and I love them for it. They love me for me. 
not because I'm a winner. <laughs> so you've drawn, but you, I'm assuming you've drawn people in your entire life that you're magnetic and people like to talk to you. Yes, I have. Because I'm that hugger. I'm, I'm, that, I'm that hugger. Even though I'm claustrophobic, as long as I'm controlling the hug, I'm okay with that. So I definitely always drawn people in. It's just my nature. <laughs>